G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Cold Waters with Mags and continuing the 1968 Cold Waters campaign. So we've been given a new mission after taking out the submarine tenders up in the Arctic Circle to hunt down and sink another fleet of tenders. So yeah, we've kind of already been here before. These ones here were due to depart just a couple of days after we completed the last mission, so we did have time to reposition, and we do know where they were launching from. They were launching from the main port in Russia, and they were heading into the Norwegian Sea, so we have a perfect ambush point. Unfortunately, while we were waiting in ambush, a Soviet aircraft passed over the area, and not long after, we were intercepted by a fleet of ships. Now, I did initially hope that this fleet of ships was the convoy that we were actually looking for, it was heading in the right direction. However, it became apparent fairly quickly that this was an anti-submarine warfare patrol and we're going to have to deal with these guys before we can continue on. Anyways, ladies and gents, hope you enjoy. Now, this kind of range... Seven kiloyards, what's our ambient? 86 decibels. It's loud, but it's not loud enough. Hopefully the thermal layer hides the launch, tra launch transients here, otherwise we're in for a world of trouble. It's maintaining 12 knots down to 6.6. .6. I'm going to have to let this go now. Torpedo. It's clearing away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's given enough clearance to not, not snap the wire on a turn. Let's start heading almost 90 degrees to the cache so we can get this torpedo out in front of her before we send it active. And for our part, well it's risky, let's drop speed to zero knots. As quiet as possible. I can't afford to. Oh, it's pinging actively at this point. No, negative 22, negative 33. It still can't hear us. The thermal layer is keeping us safe at this point. And it's probably all that's hiding our torpedo at this point as well. Torpedo, I need you to get up there or get out there as far away from me as you possibly can as quickly as you can here, yeah, otherwise I am going to have to dodge torpedoes from a standing start. A torpedo still floating at around 200 feet, same depth as me. It'll get detected any second now. Uh, running is going to be surface running. We're going to take manual control, control to straighten it out because we can see exactly where the caching is. She hasn't turned yet. She can't see it. Oh, 
we may have just got a full-on surprise attack here. It doesn't seem to have detected this at all. It looks like the thermal layer is actually keeping the... Um... No, there it goes. It's detected. All right. Short activate. Active sonar. Once it hits the waypoint, it's going to pop up and go straight in. Turn. And yeah, the angle's off enough that anything return fire at this point should uh, not be a problem. Depth, it's nearly to the surface. If you don't kill it in one hit, just take out the engines. Too close for countermeasures. It survived. And... Engines still do appear to be functional. five knots, bring the nose around, and let's rearm the torpedoes to do this again. That's unfortunate. I was really... Yeah, it's still maintaining 14 knots. I was really hoping if that didn't sink it in one hit, which I wasn't expecting it to, because these things, they're, they're not great. The, um, God, what are they again? The Mark 37s. They don't have a particularly big warhead on top of everything else. Just a... It was an issue of technology in the time. I've sort of spoken about it before, but just because of the nature of how they operated, which was incredibly unique for their time period, they did not have a lot of space for either a warhead or for a propulsion system that could actually get them going. But if we disabled the Cashin's engines, I could finish it off with Mark 16 with no problems at all. Mark 16? Yes, Mark 16. Sorry, I'm having a day where I'm forgetting all of the weapon designations here. Um, and that would leave us, obviously, with only the rigger to worry about, but... That is not going to be a thing, unfortunately. Although, surprisingly, the Cashin... Despite having been hit by a torpedo, still only doing 14 knots. may not have killed its engines, but maybe, just maybe, Five knots too, and we're running straight. Still only holding fourteen. The rigger's running twenty eight though, and it's heading in our direction, so that's alright, we'll let the rigger run. Let it close in on the area, and then we'll hit it with a torpedo the same way. I'm going to have to take another shot of this. Alright, tube one away. Wire is intact. Okay, that's better. Now, I'm not going to activate the... I'm not going to activate the active sonar with this one, but what we'll do is we'll give it a short run so it goes into activation. We're not going to tell it to go to the surface either. We're going to leave it at 200 feet and we're going to have it active, um, listening for um, sound passively. 
because the torpedoes run at a higher speed once they're active and I need it to speed up if we're ever going to catch that cashin. Go. Very good, you turned in just the right direction. I want you to run that way please and maintain your depth. We'll bring you to the surface later. Now I've had moments where I've had torpedoes like that that have had the wires break and go off and still managed to find a target, but in this case, the rigger is too far south and unless the cashin was to do a almost 180 degree turn and pull itself back in front, I don't think that's going to happen, so that is definitely going to be a waste of torque. So, while we're running through a little bit more, well, basically wasting time for these torpedoes to start catching up and waiting for these um, anti-submarine warfare patrols to come in, I'm almost 100% convinced at this point that this is not my target. My mission this time is to hunt down another submarine tender group. Oh, warship tender group, rather, or just a resupply group. But um, we have no cargo ships here. I would have, I would have heard them by now. So, this is just an ASW patrol. I'm going to have to deal with. But um, you may be hearing more clicks and more noise running in the background than normal, um, although I do filter all of my audio, uh, my microphone audio, before I put it up on the channel, obviously. But I've switched over to some new recording software. I'm probably going to talk about it in a rundown under sometime relatively soon. But um, I started having a whole bunch of problems with Shadowplay in the... The, uh, the last update, so I flicked over to Morellis Action. Um, I actually started using Action before Shadowplay, right when I first started the channel. And um, yeah, we've changed back. I've changed back over to using it now. A new update for it has come out, and it is um, it's very, very, very good. But I haven't managed to tune the microphone sensitivity just yet, so I might you might be able to hear the keyboard clicks, the chair and a few other things, as much as I'm trying to clear them out as much as possible. And it looks like the rigger is having a crack. Still got 16 minutes on Torpedo 1, so that's fine. And the Cashin is still only running at 14 knots, so yeah, I reckon... We may not have uh, we may not have sunk it. We may not have disabled the engines, but it is. So I try and get all the cameras into the right position here. Um, it is looking very much like we've damaged the engines, and at 14 knots, it won't get away from this torpedo. Uh, avoid the noisemaker. Just turn north. That's perfectly fine. Now the rigger's running south. Come on, rigger, get back up here. There it is. There's the rigger's torp. And it was aimed at the location of ours, so it's... Uh, Entirely sure what it's doing at this point. Firing a torp and then disengaging like that, putting your um, putting your props in the direction of what you suspect is the target, and there's counter fire off the cashin. That's putting the submarine in your baffles. If you missed, you'd never know. The cashin, you know, you sort of get away with it. It knows a torpedo is coming for it. So let's turn on the active homing now. Just because, yeah, now it's time to. Let the poor Keshin crap itself. And it's still running at 14 knots. Yeah, its engine was crippled. It was never going to outrun this. And... Boom! of the Russian Navy and she is rolling over fast. So 
that's interesting. She's. I haven't actually heard any helicopters up for this one. Come to think of it, I haven't actually heard any helicopters in this entire campaign so far. Well, that is one, so. Let's have a look and see what else we've got here. Now, the rig is still running south. If I, if my torpedo had not hit the Cashin, that torpedo most likely would have detected the Cashin as it was manoeuvring and would have engaged it as well. So we could have just had a situation set up where the rigger snapshot at my torpedo and ended up sinking the Cashin instead. Well, since the rigger is running south, 28 knots. Start starting to turn back. Damn it! I was going to dive down to about five or six hundred feet and run flank until it started to turn. But since it's already turned, reload tube one, tube two. We will stay at two hundred feet. Actually, running at 28 knots but you are going just off side of the cache and that's not far DDG, 4,750 tons. The rigger is only 1,400 tons. A single torpedo should kill the rigger. So I'm, I was just wondering then whether or not I, sh like I should have double shot at the, um, uh, at the Keshin, at that weight. So Krista, Keshin. Yeah, 4,750 tons, I should have double shot by default. Although I had that torpedo failure, so I didn't really have that option. Um, just to guarantee that it went down. That kind of weight is going to be hard for a single uh, Mark 37 to be able to take. The Riga at 1,400 tons, however, that's a, sig that's a quarter of the size overall. Or a third of the size, roughly, somewhere in there. We are very, very, very close. Turn on to target. We're at 4.6. Three. It's closing a hell of a lot faster than I expected it would have. Please don't break. Tube 3 is clear. Changing direction. Running at 28 knots, the rigger... Actually, yeah, running at 28 knots, the rigger is probably not going to be able to hear this at all. We're below 200 feet. We're below the thermal layer. That's fine. Switch surface running. Actually. Quickly switch surface running. Ah, she's heard the talk. Uh, go active. Uh, 
unfortunately Riga may be just fast enough if she doesn't turn to be able to outpace this although uh, now the gap's almost the same I need to make a turn I need to make a turn Mark 16 cannot be 5 or 180 feet. Alright, set depth. 150. Come on, hurry, 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 hurry. Torpedo is away. Be enough. The Mark 16s are obviously significantly faster. So while the Mark 37 is not going to catch the rigger, the Mark 16 most certainly can. But it has no guidance. It is just a dead fire torpedo. It has no tracking or anything. It's old school basically excess world war ii tech so hopefully the rigger will detect the mark 16 coming in and despite the fact that it is a dead fire torpedo it will maneuver regardless I'm not expecting it to hit. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not going to. It just needs to... No, that's not even going to be close enough to let it turn. Yeah, there's no point for a second one. We'll see what happens. It's getting close. It's the crossover with the torps. Maybe I should have let the rear get closer. Yep, it's not going to turn. Alright, so let's straighten up this torpedo, leave it on active, surface running, and let's start reloading the tubes. Plot course. Set speed to 28 knots. That's fine, we can cavitate. Set depth to. Let's go 500, force is 700. We can cavitate, it's not a problem, the rigger can't hear us anyway. At the moment, it's got an arse full of its own props as well as an active torpedo that's currently pinging the hell out of its rear end. I just want to make sure I'm in a significantly different spot for when this rigger turns back around and starts looking for us again. We should stop cavitating soon anyway. There we go. Let's use a little time acceleration here. No, maybe. I'll be 
in there in the second menu, okay? How long are you going to run for? All right, torpedo has ran out. Full stop on engines. Make turn zero knot maneuvering eye. All right, range to the rigger. Eight point four kilyards. All right, we managed to actually close up some decent space there. Still drifting at twelve. It's still maintaining maintaining twenty eight. So hopefully, it didn't hear us slam on the brakes then. Hopefully. Come left to one one seven L I. Right, bugger all speed actually. Sorry that I'm not talking much here, but I'm trying to focus on this, uh, working out exactly how I'm going to get this shot. Hitting ships like the Rigger is a pain in the ass, because they can just straight outrun the only guided torpedo that you have. So you've essentially got to trap them. And their, their basic instinct is always to turn and run from the torpedo, because of course they actually can. sitting at zero it's actively pinging but it's actively pinging at 28 knots at 28 knots look at this we're 4.5 kilo yards off and it's negative 31 on active it can't hear us it's just trying to drive us We are at 500 feet here, which is probably going to be one of the bigger concerns. Um... It should not be able to hear this. Go surface running immediately. short just so I can get from 500 feet to the surface before the rigger just passes straight over the top Seen. Now we're probably going to break a wire here. Come on, get us 
to the surface as much as we possibly can. That's fine. We can cavitate. We're up the rigger's rear, so it doesn't matter. Yep, I suspected that would happen. It doesn't matter. Our torpedoes are never going to be able to catch this thing anyway. It's going to need to basically stumble on top of us for us to be able to get a shot with the um, with the Mark 37s. But I'm not going for the Mark 37s. All right, 150. Drop speed. Negative five. Three, two, one. Hold speed at ten knots. Two away. And it appears we are now out of Mark 16s. So that is all of our shot. Speed back to 28 knots. Depth back to 200 feet, so we're both uh, below the thermal plane. And now it's just a matter of seeing what happens. Let's accelerate time a little bit here. And at this speed, we've just lost them all. Oh! <laughs> I wasn't actually expecting either of those to hit, but that actually worked. Yeah, there we go, you runny bastard. We got you. Well, let's go check out the mission results. So, as expected, there were only two ships in this particular patrol, and we did get both of them. And, as also expected, this was not the mission objective. This was just an anti-submarine warfare patrol, likely responding to the aircraft that passed over while we were hanging around waiting for our actual target. So, we do have to hang around here for a little bit longer and... Well, just wait for our target to arrive. But we'll pick that one up next time. Anyways, guys, until then, remember to click that like button if you do, share and subscribe if you would like to see more, and as always, dive smart, dive safe, and I'll catch you in the depths.